Hey! So if you're new to my channel, my name is Matt, and I have literally the worst channel on YouTube. You won't find anything lower class, crappier, or horrible out there. So, if you want to join the channel and be one of my haters, click the subscribe button. Anyway, so I hadn't planned on making a video essay on my channel, but I recently watched a video of a movie critic's top 20 films of the year, and I felt the need to say something because it really just frustrated me. So get ready for a little bit of a rant that's off topic from the rest of my channel. So let's talk about desensitization for a moment. I know, it sounds boring, but trust me, I have a point. Have you ever known someone really into like kinky sex who's bored by vanilla sex? There are many reasons for this for sure, but a lot of times the key is desensitization. They're bored with so-called regular sex because either they have too much of it, they watch too much porn or something to that effect, and so they've become desensitized and need something even more to push them over the edge. This is the same mechanism that drives people to overindulge in anything because humans naturally become desensitized to sensations over time, and critics of any kind are not immune to this. Take a food critic. They grew up eating regular food, just like most people, but because their job is to review food, they've now tasted just about everything and they are sick of the plain stuff. This leads them to trying more daring foods. And there's nothing wrong with that, but this is why, you know, the average person might just be satisfied with, you know, say, regular cheese enchiladas. Yet the food critic needs a basil-infused rice flour tortilla goat cheese enchilada with a beet reduction sauce on a bed of arugula and a side of chilled camel liver to consider it good, or even passable. This is natural in all people. Film critics are no different. They get used to seeing the standard crowd-pleasing fare and have to seek out something different. So, what's the problem with this? Well... All people are subject to the same desensitization process. The problem is that, in our culture today, the average person is now ashamed to like normal things, and we just tell ourselves, oh, this is total trash, I shouldn't like this. And critics, unfortunately, reinforce this all the time. In fact, many critics totally shit all over quote-unquote average movies, talking about them like they are destroying culture, when in fact they are what define our culture. Art and culture isn't what is on the fringe of everyone's enjoyment. Instead, it is what that culture likes and what that culture produces. Critics, on the other hand, make it seem like only a few elite persons in the culture could ever understand or define what makes art. And this is just f***ing stupid. So this one critic that I was watching was talking about how he loved all of these pretentious movies for the year, speaking about all the beautiful cinematography and all the direction and all this kind of stuff, which is fine. But then he went on to talk about his favorite video games of the year, and he felt the need to preface this with like a disclaimer, saying that he had quote unquote, terrible taste in games. Just totally implying that since he liked popular games that other people liked, it must be trash. He apologized for liking these games repeatedly and was like, well, other critics might have different things to say about these games, but I like them as if he were just totally ashamed of his taste. This is what really got to me and sparked this whole video essay slash rant. So coming back to desensitization, when it comes to movie critics, most of them have seen so many movies over the course of their careers that they just have become bored with what other people might feel is entertaining or good. They ignore any movie that might be commercially successful assuming it couldn't possibly be good simply because it was popular. And some even go so far to say that any movie that is successful financially couldn't possibly be good because if so many people like it, then it has to be stupid. This is what leads people to be ashamed of liking anything in pop culture. Critics are really, therefore, just like people who have watched too much pornography and are bored to death with plain, quote-unquote, vanilla sex scenes. And then they start to seek out the absolute on-the-edge fringe content because it's the only thing to entertain them. Film critics, or any critic, are so bored with the standard fare in their medium 
that they have to seek out the random, on the fringe, crazy content to think that it's good or passable. What this means is that many so-called art movies are just as terrible as bad mainstream movies. Just because something is unpopular doesn't make it good, and in fact, it may even say that it's bad. Let me ask you something. Do you remember The English Patient? No? Okay, that's fine. And it's fine even if you do, but most people don't. It came out in 1996 and was praised as being a beautiful, wonderful piece of art that transcended time, and it won a bunch of Oscars, but no one really remembers it anymore. Why? Because it was absolute forgettable trash. It was overly long, poorly written, badly shot, over the top, and just garbage. It was just like the Transformers movies or any other blockbuster nowadays that's easy to forget and just comes out and disappears. However, the difference is, is that this was a different kind of trash. Trash that was built specifically to appeal to critics who have been desensitized to everything else. Studios have gotten in the habit of releasing movies that will be popular with the masses, as well as a small subset of movies that will be unpopular but will appeal to the critics. They need both on their rosters so that they can seem to have some credibility in the art world. Because just like mainstream audiences can fall for garbage that makes millions of dollars, critics can just as easily fall for garbage that flops but just looks different from everything else, so it has to be art. In fact, let's look at a list of some of the biggest Oscar-winning movies of the 90s. Have you heard of any of these? If these look unfamiliar, it's likely because they were unpopular. But it is what the critics loved at the time. This is because these movies are not good, per se, they're just different. This doesn't mean that all of them are bad, in fact, I've never even seen most of them. But the point is that critics loved them merely because they were on the fringe and unpopular. They are built to receive praise from critics as being masterful works, but then quickly forgotten like all of the blockbusters that were trashy entertainment released in the same year. I bet you that 10 years from now, no one will remember that total dumpster fire of a movie called Crash. Did anyone ever see that? It won Best Picture in 2004, and I wonder how... I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Honestly, I've seen Crash a couple of times. And it is one of those movies that could be classified as so bad it's good because it is beyond over the top, poorly acted, terribly shot, and just incompetently done in almost every possible way. Yet in that year, it was the critic's darling, and anyone who went against this idea was ostracized. But why am I talking about this? Because it seems that no one realizes this anymore. And our culture has a very toxic trend going on of just sh** on anyone who likes something that's popular. Only if you like the things that aren't mainstream are you considered intelligent or have taste. And this was perfectly personified in this critic's statement about his terrible taste in video games. It's an elitist trend that is destroying creativity in favor of being different. This isn't to say that critics are useless or anything, but just that I'm so tired of the elitism because of the peer pressure that they have from other critics. You know a movie that's amazing and definitely a work of art? Something that stood the test of time? James Cameron's Aliens. It was a blockbuster and is considered by most to be a decent action movie. But because it was popular, you will be hard pressed to find anyone praising it as a genius movie. Instead, people will dismiss it as a popcorn flick or your standard action fare, but it's really far from it. There are many things that make it unique, including a very engaging story framed around a quote-unquote standard action movie, great visual effects, and a definite art style. Plus, great acting, and just general all-around fun. This movie, released in 1986, received generally positive reviews from critics when it came out and was also financially successful, which is a rare combination, but it does happen. Great movies and shows can also be unsuccessful with both audiences and critics, but still be good. 
A good example of this was the show Arrested Development, which is just now being discovered by many people many years after it was canceled. So really, I guess the whole point of what I'm saying here is that most critics have been desensitized to what non-critics would find entertaining or good. This is also not to say that everything that is entertaining is good, but unfortunately in today's culture there's a major disconnect between critics and consumers. The main reason for this is desensitization, and I don't really see this trend changing anytime soon. And no, I don't have a solution to this problem either. I told you this was just a rant video. I'm just tired of it. So I implore you as a person, just stop judging others and yourself for liking the things that you like. Critics are just people and most of them are completely out of touch with the rest of the world. Okay, so that was my rant. And again, my name is Matt, and this is the absolute worst channel on YouTube, as you can probably tell. <laughs> so, subscribe if you want more awful content, or you want to become one of the haters. And make sure to leave a comment on how terrible this channel is down below. Leave a like if you want other haters to see this too, and join in on the hate, and just bash this video to death. But until next time, make sure to tell all of your friends how awful this is, and... Thanks for the view, and uh, yeah, keep on hating.